Hey folks, it's Brad LeDrew here at Western GM in Drumheller, Alberta, Canada. And it's a little bit cold outside. I hope my voice doesn't crack too much. My hands are already cold. And we're going to talk about towing today. You guys have asked for a video specific about towing, so we're going to give you one. We really appreciate you guys watching our videos and liking them and sharing them and commenting and all that stuff. So let's get into the heart of it today. We know one thing for sure. You're going to learn a lot about towing and the differences between half tons, three quarter tons, one tons, and one ton dual rear wheels once you're done watching this video. So getting into it, let's talk about our most popular selling truck here in Alberta. This would be our 5.3 liter V8, putting out 355 horsepower, 383 foot pounds of torque. Again, four by four crew cab in what we call a short box. So that's a five foot eight box, not a six and a half foot box, okay? So looking at this truck right here, they will tow basically 9,000, 9,100 pounds, somewhere around there, 9,600 pounds. All depends if they have a sunroof or if they have boards from the factory or not, because that all affects the weight of the vehicle. So again, right around 9,000, 9,500 pounds, okay? And the payload, so that's the amount of weight you can have in the box of this truck, is right around 1,700 pounds of payload, okay? Now you can say, well, Brad, you guys have a, an amazing 6.2 liter putting out 420 horsepower, 460 foot-pounds of torque. That must tow and haul a whole lot more. Well, actually, no. The tow rating is exactly the same at 9,100 and 9,500 pounds, depending on if it's got a sunroof and navigation and boards. So again, let's say it's 9,500 pounds. And the uh, payload is, again, 1,700 pounds. When you add the optional trailer max package, so you go from this mirror to this nice chrome mirror, like this one, okay, and it's square, now that's called your max trailing package, which you can get in a 5.3 or a 6.2 and ups your payload to 2,000 pounds in the back and 2,100 pounds if it's got the 6.2 and your max towing to 10.8 in the 5.3 and 11.7, so 900 pounds more in the 6.2 liter, okay? Now when we go into your three quarter tons and your half, or sorry, three quarter tons, your one tons and your one ton doer wheels, all these numbers change quite a bit. So. If we want to talk about, say, um, uh, conventional towing. So let's, let's go look at that first. So conventional towing is when you put a receiver, a ball receiver, into the back of your truck. You've got your four pins and your seven pins. You connect it, obviously. You should always test your trailer brakes, make sure everything's working. But in a 2500 like this, conventional towing with a ball is 13,000 pounds. A three quarter, this one ton, sorry, this 3,500 one ton is also 13,000 pounds. But when you add the dual rear wheels like this one, that uh, conventional towing goes to 20,000 pounds of towing. So again, just towing a regular trailer behind you, there's no difference between a 25 and 35 when it comes to what it can handle. When you talk about your fifth wheel is when numbers change a little bit. So again, a three quarter ton, a 2,500 series, when you use your pop-up gooseneck, your fifth wheel trailer hitch from the factory, you can see right in the box, you also have your um, power outlet for your controller to connect your trailer. So again, nice seven pin connector. So with that one, in a 2500, this one here, you've got 13,500 pounds of fifth wheel towing. When you go up to the 3500 one ton, so again, single rear wheel, this one will tow 17,200 pounds. So that's quite a bit of difference, okay? And then when you go into this dual rear wheel, okay? Apologize, I'm really cold, my hands are shaking. When you go into this dual rear wheel, this one will tow 22,700 pounds. And we're talking about these specific trucks. These are all Duramax diesels, you know, legendary Duramax diesel with your Allison transmission. There's over a million of these bad boys on the roads in North America. They're fantastic, they're reliable. You've got crazy 445 uh, horsepower, 910 foot-pounds of torque. And I mean, they're, they're, they're comfortable, they're decent on fuel, and they're powerful. So when you look at these trucks, when you talk to 25 and this 35, these are both six and a half foot box, okay? When you get a dual rear wheel, it automatically comes in an eight foot box. Again, these are four wheel drive, Duramax diesels, and these are the actual real numbers of these trucks, okay? Now, <laughs> we know the towing's a bit different when it comes to the fifth wheel, which also, if you think about it, why would they be a little bit different if flat towing, conventional towing, is no different? 
okay? And it has to do with the payload that the truck can handle. So let's figure out, let's do some math here, and how can we figure out what the payload of this 2500 is, okay? So obviously you need your owner's manual, but a good example is if this uh, vehicle's gross vehicle weight rating is 9,900 pounds, then that's what a 2500 crew cab, four wheel drive Duramax diesel is. Minus the vehicle weight. So this one will be right around say 7,400 pounds. So that means the payload you can have, the cargo you can have in the back of this truck will be about 2,500, just over 2,500 pounds, okay? In this one ton single rear wheel, so 3500 series again, in the back of this one, this one's gross vehicle weight rating, so GVWR, is 11,500 pounds, minus the vehicle weight, which is about 7,500 pounds. This vehicle's got 3,927 pounds of payload. And then you add these extra wheels in the back of this dual rear wheel, okay, and the payload goes up again by about another thousand pounds so this G gross vehicle weight rating of this bad boy is 13,025 pounds and you subtract the weight of the vehicle which is right around 8,000 pounds this can have 4,930 pounds of payload in the back of this specific truck so there you go that's some really different numbers when it comes to the payload in the back which also affects if you're doing your fifth wheel trailering there's lots of things that all affect your trailering but obviously payload is uh, you don't want to be over your payload uh, the same thing when you're towing say you're uh, I'll stick my hand there so you can kind of see so when you're flat towing your trailer you want your trailer to be level you don't want the front of your trailer nose dipping down because then that's going to affect the ass into your truck is going to be squat down it's not going to control or handle very well okay especially when it comes to say if you're you're in a real bad head or side wind that's not good also at the same thing you don't want the weight of your stuff at the back of your trailer so your trailer is lifting up the ass end of your truck because it's not, it's not weighed properly, okay? So the same thing applies. If you read your you know, trailer manufacturers, all that, they all say you should keep about 60% of the vehicle's weight over the rear axles of your trailer, okay? So that's the best way to tow. But also when you're towing, that weight, like I said, affects the back of your truck. You need to figure out how, how we can figure out how much weight is on that back of that ball or on the back of this fifth wheel inside your vehicle. So there's actual math we can do to figure that out as well. So that's called your, uh, uh, your uh, uh, actually it is math, but <laughs> I'm getting tongue tied here. But the proper way to do it is to do it this way. Okay, we live in a valley. You can see, take a look, there's hills all over. When we go out of the valley this way, there's a weight scale, okay? We recommend for our farmers, our operators, we deal with a lot of these people. If you primarily drive this vehicle and it's you, your 200 rear end in the driver's seat, you got a partner in crime that's always with you. Maybe you've got a big Husky or a big Labrador retriever that's in the back with you. Maybe you have a case of water and a case of, you know, maybe you got a couple big toolboxes in the back here as well. Some guys have a slip tank. So what you need to do is you need to take this truck with your trailer connected and drive up to the weight scale. When you get onto the weight scale, pull ahead, but don't pull your trailer tires onto the weight scale, okay? And you're gonna weigh yourself and that's called your combined weight. You pull over, you disconnect your trailer and you reweigh your vehicle and that's called your solo weight, okay? So again, it's you, your partner, all that stuff we mentioned before, still in the vehicle. That's called your solo weight. And you subtract the two, and that's the current tongue weight on the back of your truck. And that tongue weight shouldn't exceed, in a fifth wheel, uh, 15 to 30% of your loaded trailer weight. Or if you're using a tongue and ball, it shouldn't exceed 10 to 15% of your trailer weight. So, I'm getting cold here, I'm sorry guys. Uh, a good example, if you have a ball hitch here and you've got a 2,000 pound trailer and you only have 1,000 pounds of cargo on the back, the most weight that should be sitting on that ball should be 300 to 450 pounds. Again, if you're using the fifth wheel trailer example that I just said here and you want to figure out that math, um, the same thing would apply. You would say, you know what, if I've got a 4,000 pound trailer and I've got um, 11,000 11, pounds of cargo, that means 10 to 15% of that total 15,000 pounds weight would be 22,050 pounds or 2,250 pounds. 
and 4,500 pounds max on, the, on your fifth wheel hitch receiver inside the box of your truck, okay? There's other things that affect trailering as well. And this is silly stuff we see all the time. Some kind of, sometimes people don't know the difference, but let's look at these tires, okay? So these are a really nice Michelin tire, okay? Uh, I would say this, this is probably a, a yeah, it is. It's a, ten, it's, a, it's a 14 ply tire. So if you take this tire, you can get LT tires that are eight ply, 10 ply, 14 ply. And let's say six years from now, you go and, and replace these tires and you replace it with a P tire instead of an LT tire. Well, if you get pulled over with 20,000 pounds behind you and the sheriff or the DOT here in Canada sees that you've got P tires and you're towing 22,000 pounds behind you, you're in a lot of trouble. You're not gonna be allowed to tow your trailer anywhere. They're gonna impound your truck and they're gonna haul you to the weight scale and, and just prove it all right as well that you're overloaded for the tires you have and that sort of stuff. There's another thing that affects towing big time and that's also your gear ratio, okay? Now, in all your Duramax diesels, Allison transmission, it's all your, your prime towing gear ratio, which is 373, okay? When you look at our half tons, this is when things can get really complicated and scary. So let's pretend here for a second, okay? This is important. Let's pretend this truck is a 308 rear end, okay? So that means that this vehicle's, um, uh, what's called gross combined weight rating is 12,000 pounds minus the weight of the vehicle, which is about 5,500 pounds, this truck would only be able to tow 6,500 pounds. And I mean, if you just drop $45,000, $50,000 on a new truck, you'd probably expect it to tow more than 6,000 pounds. So that's, that's a big, uh, big no-no. Uh, a lot of city dealers for fuel economy that order trucks with a 308. Almost all of our trucks are like this actual truck, like I mentioned before, and like this one actually is, which is a 342. So that ups your gross combined weight rating to 15,000 pounds, which means you take away the vehicle weight of 5,500 pounds. This truck will tow, like I said before, about 9,500 pounds. And if it had the, again, trailer max, of course, we're gonna give you the same gear ratio as our HD truck, which is the best. Doesn't matter if you have a Ford, a Dodge, a Chev, a 373 gear ratio has always been the best gear ratio for towing. And again, 373, 16,500 pounds of your gross combined weight rating, less your vehicle weight of say 5,500 pounds, 11,200 pounds of towing. So that's the math of how you figure that one out. <clears throat> so again, when you're looking at your truck, you wanna make sure you know if it's got a 308, if it's got a 323, a 342, or if it has the optimal 3.73 for towing. A, a 373 or a 342, or even a 323 with an eight speed automatic is still very good for towing, but a 308 just isn't, okay? And there's, there's some other more things I can go into, more things I can talk about, but those are the two things I really wanna focus on is in this formula. If you take your gross combined weight rating minus the actual weight of your vehicle, and what we would recommend, again, is if it's you and, say, your, your wife, and or if it's, say, your wife, is driving, you're the passenger, doesn't matter. You have two kids in the back, you have a puppy, and you have some camping gear in the back. Go up to the weight scale as you are right now, and that's gonna be your gross vehicle weight. That's the way it normally handles, that's the way you normally drive around, and that's what you wanna know that number, and you minus that from the gross combined weight rating of the vehicle. So let's say, like I said, from the factory, the door jam sticker, or your owner's manual will say this one's 5,500 pounds, but you add 200 pounds of yourself, you add 150 pounds of your wife, 100 pounds worth of kids, a 50 pound dog, and 300 pounds in the back, your tow rating and your payload all goes down, okay? And it's called a pound in and a pound out rule, okay? So pretty example, pretty, you know, great example is that if you look at the owner's manual of this truck, it's like, hey, yeah, you know what? This, this thing can tow 9,600 pounds, perfect, okay? But let's say you put 200 pounds of running boards on it you put a 200 pound um, bull bar on the front, you put a t hard tunnel cover, say another 100, 150 pounds, okay? Maybe you change the rims from these 18s to an aftermarket 22 or say a 33 inch off-road tire, all that stuff, okay? All that adds more weight to the vehicle and that added weight 
means that's less cargo you can have inside or occupants inside or less cargo you can have here in the back. That's really important. So don't just go by your owner's manual. Actually go to the weight scale with how you drive it around so you're never in that situation where DOT or the sheriff's got you pulled over and, you know, obviously it's important to be safe for other people. You don't want to lose control of your load or anything like that. But again, you, want, you don't want to be in that uncomfortable situation where you're overloaded with payload or if you're, say, you know, overloaded with a trailer, too much weight in the back. And I can tell you, not like the old trucks, these 2018s, 17s, 16s, 15s, 14s, this current generation body style, if you <clears throat> say, if this is a 308 rear end, like just go back to that pretend example, actually this white one, this pretend example where it's a 308. If you put, say, four 300 pound guys in here and you throw in 200 pounds of cargo in the back, okay, you added aftermarket boards and say some other accessories equaling about 100 pounds. You're at the max payload of this vehicle, okay, if it was a 308. So that's something to keep in mind is that if you've got a whole bunch of big people inside and you've got a little bit of cargo, you might be at your max payload, but the truck isn't squatting down. You could still throw another 800 pounds in the back and the truck wouldn't squat down barely at all. But again, if you get pulled over by DOT or somebody and they drag you to the scales, you could be in a predicament. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Guys, we really appreciate you checking out our channel. We're always doing new stuff. And just, oh, what's this in the background here? This is the all new 2019 trucks. And here's the good news. Payload and towing across the board, Chev and GMC are up nearly 30% on the new body style trucks. And it's because of the use of aluminum, more mixed materials and suspension tweaks and changes. So there you go. You take our most common trucks are towing 9,500 9, pounds and they have 1,700 pounds of payload. It's up nearly 15 to 20% in this crew cab configuration in a 6.2 liter like this one. And it's even more if you add the optional Trailer Max package. But there you go, folks. We really appreciate you checking out the time today. Uh, again, my fingers are freezing here. I apologize if I've been a sh bit shaky, but I uh, hope you guys have a great day. It's December. We don't have any snow for Christmas yet, but let's hope so. Cheers.